your hour by our guide to election night, the key seats, and the battle of the TV pundits. After seven exhausting weeks, the campaign trail is finally over and now the voters have their say. For those with the energy to stay awake tonight, here is the Mail's Hour by Guide to the Seats to Watch Out For. The BBC, ITV and Sky will reveal the results of their combined exit poll at 10 p.m., although this proved to be less than accurate in both the 2015 election and last year's Brexit referendum. As usual, Houghton and Sunderland South will be the first to reveal their results, and the direction in which Labour's 13,000 majority goes could be an early indication of how Labour will fare nationally. Nuneaton is expected to be the first marginal seat in the country to declare, just as it was in 2015. David Cameron knew he was having a good night when he saw the Tory majority increased from 2,000 to 5,000, but it will provide a chance to hear her thoughts on the night overall. At 2 a.m., former Labour Minister Ivan Lewis defends his Barry South area, with a loss meaning Mrs May could be in for a majority of more than 100, while in Hastings and Ryan Barud is defending a majority of 4,800. Crucial seats are also likely to be settled at around 4.30am, including Nick Clegg's Sheffield Hallam the seat. It will also be the announcement of Theresa May's maiden head constituency, which she will hold comfortably. As the number crunching draws to a close, Tory McKinley beat former UK leader Nigel Farage last time, but his 2,800 majority could be under threat following the CPS decision to charge him over election spending allegations. 75 seats to swing the election, tactical voting guide reveals how the largest possible Tory majority can be returned. By Ross Clark Remember the Progressive Alliance? At the start of the election campaign, with Labour floundering in the polls, many on the left were calling for Labour voters to back Lib Dem, Green, SNP and Plaid Cymru candidates in some constituencies in the hope of cutting Theresa May's majority as far as possible. Instead, the minor parties have withered as Labour has strengthened in the polls, to the point at which it is just conceivable, if still unlikely, that we could be waking up to a Jeremy Corbyn premiership on Friday morning. That is a prospect which will fill many conservative-minded voters with horror. Now, it is they who should consider voting tactically. In most constituencies, by far the best way to ensure that Labour is kept out of power, or the Tories gain a bigger majority, is simply to vote Conservative. Second, there are many seats which Labour won in 2015 but where, a year later, the majority voted to leave the EU. All those who voted Labour but want to leave Europe must now see that Theresa May is far better placed to negotiate strongly with Europe than the prevaricating Mr Corbyn. That's why those people should vote Tory this time. Third, in some seats the Tory candidate has little chance of victory, so voters should consider supporting other parties in order to defeat Labour. If the most dramatic polls turn out to be correct and we are in Hun Parliament territory, these are the marginals which could make all the difference.